Okay, so second topic we're going through today then is cell division. So we've just gone through cell structure. That's given you a little insight into the cell, more about the ultra structure. Today, we're, and the second thing we're doing then is our cell division. Okay, so again, like before, we have our four or five points up here, the left hand corner, the most examinable points that you need for your leaving cert. Okay, so these uh, points that we're going to go through, we have the functions, and that's the functions of cell division. We're going to go through chromosomes in more detail, and you might recall from a few minutes ago, chromosomes are inside in the nucleus. Next thing is the cell cycle. So cell cycle is just talking about the lifespan of a cell, or what it does in its lifetime. Um, fourth thing then, we have these new terms, mitosis and meiosis, okay? This is a major part of this chapter. We're just looking at how the cell divides, okay? And last thing then um, to do with this chapter is just looking briefly at cancer, okay, and how it occurs. Now, with this chapter, cell division, what's happening is we have one cell breaking down into forming two cells. And it happens in kind of three, two steps here, okay? First step, our, our nucleus is going to, um, to multiply, or it's going to, we're going to have two nuclei inside of the one cell here, okay? Ideally, we don't want a cell with two nuclei, okay? From all of our studies in biology and science, we know that in general a cell just has one nucleus. So after we have our two nuclei, that needs to split further into two cells here. Okay? So where does this all arise from or why do we even need this cell division? Well, this cell division, it's arising from the fact that all cells exist from pre-existing cells. They arise from pre-existing cells, okay? So every time you have a cell, it's not just going to crop up from thin air. It's actually arising from a previously made cell or a previously living cell. Now, we've got different functions or why here. This is looking at our functions of cell division. Well, one thing is going to be reproduce. So if I have a single celled organism here, okay, let's say I have some kind of a prokaryotic cell here, which would mean there'd be no nucleus. Um, if I have a unicellular um, cell here, what's going to happen is when it divides and produces new two new cells, well, then I just have a new cell, okay? So I'm after reproducing, simple as that. For the someone like us, we're made of multiple cells, trillions of cells, as I said before. The reason that we need this cell division to happen is to allow for growth and repair, okay? So if I get a cut on my finger and I need lots of new cells coming in and forming to heal that wound or to form a scab, cells are going to need to divide and come in and form new layers of skin, okay? So that's our, our second function is the growth and repair of an organism. And again, that's for a multi-cell, okay? When this comes up in the leading cert, don't jump, to con don't jump to conclusions and rush in and say, okay, here's a function, um, reproduction, okay? Always read the whole question because sometimes they'll ask, what's the function of cell division in a multicellular organism? Or they'll ask for a unicellular organism. So you need to know the difference there. And it's fairly straightforward. I mean, if it's just one cell and it's going to divide into two, well, then you've got a whole new cell. So then you've got your reproduction happening there. With us, the likes of us, but if one or two of my cells reproduces here, divides there, it doesn't mean I've produced anything new. It's just more cells in my, in my organism or in any organism. Okay, so going down then, the next part we're looking at are chromosomes. Okay, there's a lot of new terms coming in here when we talk about the chromosomes. And this kind of um, information, this detail here is really helpful when it comes down to genetics. Okay. So we just want to, I just want you paying particular focus to this section here, okay? So we say down here, chromosomes are made of DNA and protein. And we've all probably heard of DNA before. And when we do think of DNA, we automatically think of this lovely double helix here that I've drawn, okay? So we've got our, our winding, our two winding strands like that is DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So we have our D. M N N A. Okay, so deoxyribonucleic acid. What happens is that DNA, and let's just zoom out a small bit, and instead of drawing my double strand, I'm just going to draw this one strand here. That is going to wrap around these proteins. Okay, so I've got a protein, another protein, 
hundreds and hundreds of, pro of proteins. What happens is this strand is wrapping around the protein like so. So you can see up here I have a strand and it's wrapping around the protein then it goes down, wraps around another protein. Okay, again, this is still my DNA, that black line there, that's my DNA, and the red circle then, that's your protein. Okay, so that's going to wrap and wrap around. What happens then is they start to fold over each other. So these lines start to fold over each other like that. So like we've done here, they're folding over. Okay, fold over, condensing, folding over, condensing. Eventually they make some kind of a structure that looks like this. Okay, and that's called your chromosome. Along that chromosome then, there's going to be certain lengths of it, okay? So we'll just draw in a little blue mark there. That's going to be called a gene, okay? Nothing special about it. I mean, it's still made up of my DNA and my protein. The only thing different is that it's going to tell the cell how to make a certain protein that gives you a certain quality, okay? Don't worry too much about that, giving it um, a... Um, protein the code for a protein yet we come to all that when we go further into the genetics chapter okay but just going back over that again you start off with your dna that's your double strand remember we're zooming out so i'm just drawing it as one single strand it's still my dna okay that wraps around a protein wrapping around your protein it starts to fold over each other forming your chromosome okay so these chromosomes are all inside in the nucleus there now, turn over the page then to page 9 in your um, notes, and you'll see that we have, uh, it says at the top there, that every species has a set number of chromosomes, okay? So inside in every nucleus, in every nucleus, in every cell of your body, you've got X amount of, pro of chromosomes, okay? Humans, we have 46 chromosomes. Monkeys have a different number, dogs have a different number, okay, all humans have the same number of chromosomes, okay, it doesn't matter, um, what matters, sorry, is just the different species, okay, it doesn't matter male or female, you have the same number of chromosomes. Now, the other thing about chromosomes is you can have either a set of chromosomes, so your chromosomes might be divided into pairs, or you could just have chromosomes on their own with no matching pair. So what I mean by chromosomes that matching pair, we might have one chromosome and it might be, you know, maybe that length when it's, when it's all condensed down like that. And somewhere else in that same nucleus, we have one with a similar length as well. It's not the exact same, but they're quite the same lengths with the same type of chromosome, okay? And all of my other chromosomes, they all have matching chromosomes as well, okay? So if a chrom chromosomes exist in pairs, or if you have two sets of chromosomes, then we say that the organism is diploid, okay? Diploid, D-I for two, okay? Anything D-I is always going to represent two. Um, so you're, how we draw that then, or how we represent that, is we would say 2N, okay? So 2N means that it's diploid. And as I said, we have 46 chromosomes in total. So we have 46, that's us humans, which means we have 23 pairs, okay? Other organisms then, or other cells, might only have half of that. And an example of that is the sex cells or the gametes, okay? So they're only going to have half of that. They, instead of having their sets here and their pairs, they just have one set, okay? And we say that these are haploid. An example of haploid, um, haploid cells is going to be the gametes, so we would say that N is equal to 20. The importance of this is so that when sexual reproduction happens, you have um, one haploid cell joining with another haploid cell, and then our diploid cell is restored. Okay, so that's the importance of that there. Okay, so again, that's going through our diploid and our haploid. That definition for diploid comes up an awful lot, so you'll see it there. It says you have two types of each chromosome. Okay, that. Um, that definition comes up time and time again in the exam paper, so you need to be able to, to define that, okay? Moving on then, so what we're talking about again, that's our, our chromosomes there. If you need to go back over that, just pause the video and go back over it again. It's really good to get a good handle on this 
um, right from the get-go. It's going to make genetics so much easier for you. And genetics makes up a huge part of the Leaving Cert exam. There's always going to be a long question on it, and there's always going to be a short question as well. Okay, what we're getting into now here is called um, the cell cycle, mitosis, meiosis. Okay, these topics, these three topics that I'm going to go through next, they're really, really popular in the Leaving Cert. They come up every year, usually as a short question, which would be 20 marks, okay? If not as a short question, it's coming up as um, part of a long question. So that would be in between 24 and 27 marks there, okay? So if you can answer, if you get this locked in right now, these 20 mark questions, you're coming out with, that's 5% of your Leaving Cert locked in. You can tick it off and put it away for another while until you have to look back over it again. Okay, so let's go then to our cell cycle here. We're talking about just how a cell works or what it's doing in its lifetime, its day-to-day -day routine. Okay, so in a cell's lifetime, it's either going to be in one of two states. It's dividing or it's not dividing, okay? If it's dividing, it's going to go through this process, mitosis or meiosis. If it's not dividing, okay, so it's just kind of chilling out, it's not really up to much, um, it's not really under that pressure of having to divide and make a new cell and all this. It's just chilling out. We say that it's in interphase, okay? Interphase is the word we use to say that it's not dividing. The way I think of that is thinking of like intermission in a play or something like that, okay? There's still things going on, of course, but we're at kind of a little bit of a break. We're not under this pressure to be um, constantly work there like we would be when the cell is dividing. Okay, the other thing about um, our interphase and our cell division stage is our chromosome exists in a different form, okay? So remember before we had our chromosomes, okay? The big squiggly lines here, they're tightly packed and tightly condensed. That's called a chromosome. That, it's, it's in that format when um, cell division is occurring. When cell division is not occurring, when we are in that interphase or that intermission part of the, the cell, chromosomes exist as chromatin. Now, it is still your DNA and your protein wrapped around each other. The only thing is it's not going to be as tightly condensed and it's kind of more loosely bundled up together and all just kind of mixed up together. Okay, the reason for that, the reason why we want them at a chromosome stage, they're much easier to distinguish, okay, when they're at their chromosome stage. The way I think of that is if I took um, all my hair here and I put that into a nice bun and it's this big bunch, it's very hard to differentiate the individual strands. But if then I were to plait different parts of my hair, I could easily pick out the different chromosomes easily or the different parts of my hair quite easily. Okay, so cell division, it's really important that they're in that chromosome state here. Chromatin then, when not a whole lot is going on. Now, the way I remember that then is we have our chromatin interphase. Okay, so we're ending in, in here, interphase. Okay, now... Some exam questions then that they're going to, um, that this question comes up, 2018 question 3, 2016 question 6, 2013 question 11C, and then 2008 question 2. Okay, so remembering that questions 1 through 6, they're all your short questions. So it came up as a short question, just asking what is interface um, in, in, in 2018, 2016, and 2008. In 2013, then, it came up as part of a long question, so that would have been worth your 24 marks there, okay? Um, the other thing that can come up in your interface, and we have it listed in our notes, is what's happening during interface. So as I said, it's kind of on a break, it's a little chillaxed, your cell isn't up to much, but there's still stuff going on, okay? And the things that are happening there is the cell itself is growing, okay? So it might be um, taking in more cytoplasm, it's making more organelles. The other thing is called DNA replication, okay? DNA replication, you go through that, it's a separate chapter itself, um, and we go through the details of that. So over the page then, on page 10, you also have the chromosomes versus the chromatin, and you've got a lovely diagram there showing you what your chromatin looks like when it's all raveled together like that, versus your chromosomes where you can individually see the chromosome itself okay the next part we're going on to then so we have our cell cycle done we have our chromosomes done and our functions done so we're going to look at mitosis and meiosis 
Now, this is our form of nuclear division. So we just go back here to our first diagram that we looked at, the basics of cell division here. We have our nucleus dividing into two, okay? And that's what mitosis and meiosis is all about here. It's just dividing that, um, that nucleus into two to make sure that both nuclei, the two new nuclei, are functional and that they work away. Okay, we have our definitions for mitosis and meiosis there, and they are slightly different. So with mitosis, you're going to have two new nuclei, okay, or we call them two new cells, or two new daughter cells. Anytime you're talking about the offspring of a cell, we call them the daughter cells, okay. The, um, the nuclei, so the two nuclei, are going to be exactly the same, so they're going to have the same number of chromosomes here. So if this... Um, if this nuclei here had six chromosomes, okay, each of these nuclei here are going to have six chromosomes again, okay? And the other thing then, they're exactly the same, there's nothing different about them. So with mitosis, you've got two new nuclei, two new cells, daughter cells, and they have the same number of chromosomes. Meiosis then is slightly different, so this time you're going to have four new cells, so imagine here we have four cells, I'm going to draw those in there, and this time our um, number of chromosomes is going to be halved, so each cell here would have three chromosomes instead of your, your um, six, okay, so if this was diploid then, and remember diploid means there's two sets, so that would be our 2n, these are going to be haploid, okay, we've taken away one of their sets, so 3 is equal to n, okay? So haploid and diploid, okay? And that's important when it comes down to um, variation and reproduction in multicelled organisms. For the leaving cert, we're really mainly focused on mitosis. And for mitosis, you need to know the process of how it happens. So how are we going from one nuclei to two nuclei to two new cells, okay? We divide that up into four steps, okay? Stage one, two, three, and four, they all have names. You need to know the order of these. You need to know what's happening, what events are happening in those stages, and you need to know the diagrams, okay? We're gonna go through the, the stages here, and then we're going to go through a little checklist. So you'll see in the notes over the page, we have our four stages of mitosis, and then at the bottom, we have a checklist. So do you know the order? Do you know the diagrams? Do you know the events? So we'll start going through that now over here.